welcome to episode 7. I'm covering Ungalab the Striker. This is TK and his giant, and you're watching GOM TV. Now, for Ungalab, I usually run his belt around his passive, which is called Crave. Ungalab's abilities that cause ability damage can benefit from critical hits, and Ungalab has a natural 6% critical hit chance. So for this episode, I'm going to balance critical chance with critical damage. Now for my loadout, I'm going to put critical chance in the beginning to give me a lot extra damage overall in the beginning when I hit level 4. And then after that, I'm going for more of a late game belt with the rest of my loadout unlocking at level 10. As far as abilities go, I like to level up Drain first. What that does is Ungalab spills a medium area puddle at close range that persists for 7 seconds, giving 6 scaling up to 30 ability damage when fully maxed out per second. Two enemies and slows them by 20% up into 50 inside the area. The ability gains benefit from increased ability power, but with Ungalab's passive, you're going to be able to do a lot more damage just by trying to get a critical chance on your abilities. This is a great ability in the beginning of the game because it allows you to slow enemies that get too close to your tower and you're able to pull them in and hopefully get a kill off of that. When playing on Glub, I always try to wait to engage enemy players when my drain ability is active. The second ability I like to level up is Stick. Ungalab releases a long range area attack that delivers 30 up to 90 ability damage and entwines enemies in a sticky glue by pulling them closer and binding them for one second. This ability gains a small benefit from increased ability power. And this works really great with your drain ability because you can put your drain down by your tower and then you can pull the enemies that are close by with your stick and really keep them in there and try to pull them as close to the base of the tower as possible. It's also great for pulling enemy guardians into your group when you're in a team fight. And then lastly, it's great for pulling enemy guardians into you when they're trying to run away. At level 5, you can unlock Bite, and where Unglob chews into her victims by causing a vicious bite that delivers 60, scaling up to 120, life stealing ability damage, and stuns the enemy guardian or creature for 0.8 seconds. Now, the combination I like to use when I play Unglob is I put my drain ability down first, creating that pool that slows the enemy guardian down and then I pull the enemy guardian with my stick and then I use the bite to hold him in there and gain some life steal. and then I start hitting my basic attacks and hopefully by then the enemy guardian will be at half health or less and then I try to finish him off and if I can't that's when I save my hunt ability which increases my movement speed by 25 up to 55 percent for four seconds and clears me of controlling effects and gains a small moment of inner vulnerability which is the last ability that I level up. Now as far as Unglove goes, he's a very squishy guardian. You want to be careful that you don't get too overly aggressive because he only has his one ability to get away and has a very short window for its invulnerability. Because of this, I try not to become out of position. Now for my loadout, what I like to do is I go with Red Book Relic first, which will give you, for every ruby in your belt, 3% critical chance. And then for my second relic, I use Goblin Gate, which gives me 12% plus 1% critical chance per level. Each critical hit you make gives you plus 4 critical damage, and this stacks up to 10 times. And then I fit all the rest of the gems with increased critical damage gems. And the reason I put the critical chance first is because at level 4, I'll have 35% critical chance, and I find this really increases my damage per second. It gives me a big boost, which allows me to be a little more aggressive. Now you can see from that kill on Legolas how useful that stick ability is when I was able to pull them into me and my ally and to under my tower, and we were able to get an easy kill right there. As a general rule of thumb when I play Ungalab, if I don't get the kill in a couple seconds, I usually back off. This is because at max level, Ungalab only has 890 health and his basic and ability resistance is only 14%. This means that if I'm in engagement long enough, I will probably just lose, just due to the fact that I have low health, low resistance, and don't really have anything to help keep me alive for much longer. Now, as far as other loadouts go for Unglob, I find that Wilderland Hunter's Relic is also a good choice. It gives you a nice balance of critical chance, attack speed, and movement speed help you chase down enemies 
do damage faster with the chance of getting a critical hit. And the way that I would choose my gems for that loadout is I would either do a damage gem as the first red gem that you have, or I would do critical chance. And that's only to really kind of benefit for the relic better because Ungulab does have his passive where he has increased critical chance. I like to just stack it up a little more so that he has a much higher chance overall. And then I would put all attack speed gems so that you get around 40% attack speed at max level. The reason that I like to run attack speed with Ungulab and I think it works well with him is like I said a little bit earlier, is because of the fact that he can't take too much damage that long and I like to not keep him in an engagement for longer than a few seconds. It lets me get in there, hit him a bunch of times, do a bunch of damage, and then get out. Attack speed also works well because if you think about it, the only way to do more damage is not just add damage to your attacks, but also just to attack faster. And this is great for Angla because he's up and close, so you're able to keep on the Guardian for longer, especially when you can slow down their movement speed in your puddle. You can really lay down a number of hits on them and just kind of keep doing the damage, do the damage, and then be able to get out when you need to. Another good tactic for Ungulab is to always try to stay in the bushes. Always kind of remain hidden. Being a striker, he's good at just coming out, laying some hits on guardians when they least expect it, and maybe even killing a guardian who has really no health and you're able to just pull them in your pool and hit them a couple times, and they're done. So I always like to stay in the bushes, kind of stay in the forest, only come out when I need to come out, and really kind of just make my presence felt, but really unknown at where I could be at any time. And you see, I can't really take advantage of that right now because you can see that the enemy has a reveal. It's that big yellow circle, and anywhere that I stand in that circle, they'll be able to see me. So one of the good ways you can kind of counter that is just make sure that they don't come near the middle of the map. If you just keep pushing them towards their tower, they'll really be forced not to be able to use it, and you'll be able to stay in those bushes for a lot longer. Now, another relic that I see a lot of people play when they use Unglob is the Mirkwood Spiders relic. And I've never really used it too much myself, but I can see by kind of the description of why people would use it, especially with Unglob's abilities. And it's a three-slot red relic. It's yellow, yellow, red. And what it does is your basic attack slows enemy guardians by 30% for three seconds with a five second cooldown so you can't keep them at 30 percent slow the entire time there is a little window of two seconds where they can regain their normal speed and try to get away and the reason that i can see this being a useful relic with unglob is when he lays down his spit ability he's able to slow enemy guardians and if you can pull them into your tower while you have that pool you can not only slow them with your ability but also your first basic attack will slow them down by 30%, so you can keep them in your pool and slow them down to a maximum of 80% with your ability for a few seconds, which is almost as good as a root, and lasts a little bit longer. So with your pull, you can really be effective under your tower that way. Another great thing is when you time it upright, is when you use your evade ability that gives you invulnerability. If you time it just right when a tower is about to hit you, you can really benefit from your health in the long run, being able to take no damage from that last tower hit, getting out of range. Uh, don't make it every time, but the way you can time it up is make sure you pay attention to that lob of fire from the tower, and don't hit it right when you see the lob of fire coming towards you, because your ability only does give you invulnerability for a split second. Wait till it's about halfway, and then hit your ability, and then you won't take any damage from that last tower hit which has saved me a couple times when I've been on almost no health and I've been able to get away making the enemy probably pretty mad about that and you can see that pool ability is really great for clearing creeps it's always great early game to put that pool right where the wave of the first creeps are going to be and going to be in the future because it is going to help you clear them a lot faster for you and your teammate as far as commands go, I'm running a heal command as my first choice, and that's only because of how fragile Unglob is, and I like to really make sure I stay alive and not die in the beginning of the match. And he doesn't have a heal ability, and I have no life steal, so it's a good option to have. For my second command, I like to have smite, because it's great to run out of the bushes and hit your smite when you're jumping lanes, and then to lay down your pool and then pull them in there, because it really lets you and your 
fellow teammates on that lane have a really good shot at getting a kill early game. And it is always just a very strong command, reducing your enemies by 30% and lowering their resistance. It's always a good one when you're a striker and when you can sneak up on somebody. And for my third ability, or my third command, excuse me, I like to go with lightning. And that's because besides my pool, which doesn't really do too much damage, uh, it doesn't last too long, I like to be able to have some team fighting abilities where I can do a good amount of damage to multiple targets and really contribute, do a high amount of damage, and then kind of back out of the team match, wait till a few enemy guardians are on lower health, and then go in there and finish them off. And I always find it's a very common command. It's very useful. I believe they even nerfed the commands um, in one of the patches a while ago. So it was a little bit stronger at one point. I think it's still a pretty strong command. And then for my last command, it's always kind of in the air. I do like to have summon defense, help your team's towers when you're playing in a defensive position, also helps with the top creature, can't get enough damage up there. If not everybody is kind of paying attention to the things on the top of the map. So people are kind of doing their own thing if you're with some randoms. I'll either use that or I will use Aerial Strike because being on Glob and I got a bunch of Guardians chasing me down, it is nice to be able to make an escape and push them off you. On Glob can also be a good Guardian even on a one lane match because of that like that pull you just saw where I pulled the Great Goblin out from under his tower. Uh, it's very useful. If I had more teammates around me I might have even gotten a kill right there. And I was able to escape. I had four guys on me almost got me and I whipped my pull. The pull with Thunglob I should mention is pretty difficult uh, just because you have them in the highlighted area they can still run out of it. Uh, just because you have the Guardian highlighted when you hit the ability doesn't mean that it's gonna pull them every single time which can be really frustrating at times uh, so you kinda gotta sometimes lead with that ability you will sometimes have to decide you know where you think they're gonna be and it works the other way around. When you're playing against Unglob, try not to move back and forth, you know, in a straight line. Um, when, when I say straight line, uh, I mean like parallel with his pull, because it makes it a lot easier for him and really, you know, really makes his job much easier. Being able to uh, just walk in there and know that he can pretty much have a guaranteed pull. What you want to do is you want to go vertical. So if you're you know, you're both, let's say, beginning of the match at the top tower and you're standing across from each other. Don't move closer and farther from him. Uh, go up and down. It's kind of zigzag because it'll make the job a lot harder for them. And you can see here we are going for the top creature now to get that added bonus damage to towers and to take half of the health out of the outermost towers. And to take it down very quick. And you can see how they used a summon defense to help uh, speed up the whole process, like I mentioned earlier. And if you find that you're in a position where you know that an enemy team might all be up at the top creature, be cautious and don't run in there one by one or even all at once. You know, be careful because they might be in the bushes just under the shrine, uh, just waiting for you to come up there. A lot of times players will bait you because they know that you might come and try to steal their kill. So they will kind of be cautious themselves. Uh, they're not always going to go for it right away, especially if they're waiting on one or two guardians. They might just be hiding in the bushes, and they're kind of just waiting to see if they can bait you out and kind of get you one by one if you're not coming up all together at the same time. So we're really making a push now. One mistake I am playing as Ungla right now is I'm not staying with my team, and you can see how that caught up with me. I should have been near them in a big group. That would have been a lot better situation for me. Instead, my selfishness kind of cost me right there. And it usually does for players who do that. It's really important to stick with your full group at the end of the game because that is likely what the enemy team is going to do. And if they jump on you and they have a slighter upper hand, then you have to start all over if all your team wipes. And that's not good because you already made that much progress on their, on their base. 
So now I'm trying to play catch up right now. One thing I can do, uh, respawning, is I'm able to level up our strongholds. And uh, I skipped the other two on the top and bottom. I just went for the middle one. Uh, it's really kind of a better situation for me when three of their teammates are dead right now to just kind of rush back right in their base. And I could probably just finish it without the siege units. Siege units are helpful, but guardians themselves are going to do much more damage. An and so all we have to do now is just finish their last outermost tower. I will try to save my team this time. I don't want to make the same mistake twice. Have another very long respawn. I want to thank you guys. Finishing the last tower. Uh, I'm going to make some more videos. Hopefully I'll have another one coming up sooner. And if you guys have any suggestions what guardians you want me to cover, uh, just post it on a comment and I'll see what I can do. Don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out. Tell other players about my channel. Have them check it out. And then, you know, give me some comments, feedback, anything you guys want to talk about. Uh, just let me know.